Find the top brands, inspiration, and great value you need to own your style now at Macy's VIP Sale. Use your coupon or Macy's card and take an extra 30% off spring trends and updates. Plus, get 15% off this season's go-to beauty, skincare, fragrances, and more. And don't miss out on limited time specials. Going on now at Macy's. Savings off regular sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. So, how does it feel when you play Roll Up to Win with Tim Hortons? Buy a hot or cold beverage using the Tim's app and find out. Roll in the app for a chance to win prizes ranging from free coffee and donuts to a Universal Orlando Resort vacation or a sweet car. Oh, don't forget the TV. And this year, every roll is a shot at a $1,000 daily giveaway drawing for two $500 prizes. Roll up to win and get treated by Tim's. No purchase necessary. Account registration required. 50 U.S. and D.C. 18 plus entered by 4223. See rules at rolluptowin.com for free entry of full details. Void in Florida and where prohibited. Just a quick FYI before we start this episode. I currently have a very hoarse Phoebe voice. And I'm going to tell you now that it does not get any better than this throughout this episode. So if you feel like it's not going to be something that you want to listen to, just feel free to skip this one. Hopefully Friday's one, my voice will sound better. Secondly, I also had to record this episode in a bathroom, randomly. And because of that, there is a slight echo. The sound is slightly different than what it normally is. It's not unlistenable, don't worry. But just wanted to let you know that it's not a permanent thing. I just, you know, these things happen. That's life. Anyway, enjoy. Welcome to mini episode 135 of Real Life Ghost Stories. Just before we begin, you're going to have to excuse my sexy Phoebe sick voice. I left this to the last minute to try and get my voice as good as possible before I recorded, but it has not improved. So we're just going to go for it as is. And I have four spooky stories for you today. And the last story comes from the 6th of July, 2021. And story number one comes from Dylan. A few years ago, my partner and I moved into a new house to rent. It was an older house, but was decently priced and had great potential. As we couldn't afford the rent on our own, we had to advertise for a few flatmates, and before we knew it, we had filled the house with a decent group of people. My partner and I shared an ensuite bedroom, which was located on the top floor of the house. One day, I was in the bathroom doing my makeup. I'd left the bathroom door ajar which led into our room, but I had our bedroom door shut as I enjoyed the quiet. Suddenly I heard our closet door in the bedroom open and a few loud footsteps against the carpet behind the open door. I figured this was my partner, who must have snuck into our room without me hearing the bedroom door open. Hi, I called out, still focusing on myself in the mirror. His voice immediately answered back, Hi. I remember smiling and asking, What are you doing? To which he replied, Nothing. For some reason, the way he said it made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I can still hear the exact tone in my head. The only way I can describe it is that he was being playful or mischievous as if he was hiding something. Perhaps the way a child would answer if they were up to no good. I called back out, No, seriously, what are you doing? And to that, the responses stopped. My question was met with silence. When I turned around and opened the bathroom door, I realised no one had been in the room. The bedroom door was still closed, but the most peculiar part is that the closet door was wide open, something I didn't do, and I know it was closed before I went into the bathroom. This startled me to my core, and I remember feeling almost sick as I spoke easily. I rushed downstairs and found my partner outside on the front lawn with our flatmate. I asked him if he was just upstairs, but they both told me they had been sitting there the whole time and were genuinely confused at my panic. My partner doesn't believe in ghosts, and instantly brushed aside my story and tried to calm me down. A couple of months later, our other flatmate, Matt, was home alone one day making himself a cup of tea in the kitchen. He had the tea in one hand and his cell phone in the other, and was walking to the lounge when he said he heard my voice, 
I'm Canadian and have a distinct accent in our house, whispering, Hi, Matt, right behind him. He was so startled he dropped his tea and his phone onto the ground and turned around to find no one. He swore that it was my exact voice and even said he spent a good 20 minutes trying to find me in the house after thinking it must be a prank. It was enough to scare him out of the house for the rest of the day and when we spoke about our similar experiences, we knew there must be something more to it. Other than this, we had other weird encounters like our doors locking us out of the house, TV turning on with full volume in the middle of the night, items going missing and reappearing, the usual ghost things. I no longer live in that house, but I think about that encounter sometimes, and it still scares me a bit to this day. I've listened to a few other ghost stories and podcasts, and this isn't uncommon, but I find it interesting why spirit would mimic people. I've heard speaking to spirits gives them energy, and I wonder if this is a method that they think you're more likely to reply to. Oh, what an interesting idea. I wonder if speaking to spirits does give them energy. I mean, we always talk about, or people always talk about when they write in their stories about how paying attention to these things often makes them worse. So maybe their way of getting attention is to literally speak to you. And then you talk back and then it gets more energy. It sucks that energy out of you. I have to be really clear as well. Not only do I have this horrible, hoarse, sick voice. I'm also sitting in a bathroom, recording this at the moment on the floor with my back to a closet and this story gave me the heebie-jeebies because whatever that was that called out your name retreated back into that closet and that does not make me happy. And story number two comes from David. My father had us raised in all religions, Judaism, Christianity, Wicca and even the occult. So it's really hard to only give you one example of my life, but here we go. My father always wanted land, and eventually we found this crummy house, but it was on the most beautiful forest land you could ask for in the Midwest. A few acres were bare, so we could have a garden, and the rest was wooded with a creek running through it. The house was built on an old farmstead, like from the pioneer days. Only the stone cellars were left. The house was completely abandoned, The lady explained that their teenage boy died in a car wreck on his way home during a snowstorm and the family just gave up on the house. We weren't crazy about the house, but we couldn't pass up on the land. We spent weeks pulling out literally this family's whole life. Furniture, clothes, children's toys and even an old freezer filled with rotten meat. The roof took some damage and we had water leaks and mould everywhere. But when we got to the dead teenager's room, we felt off. It was completely different from the rest of the house. His old waterbed was in there. We even found some porno magazines. But like I said, it was wrong. Like a mouldy, forgotten time capsule of his life. We got the rest of the house pretty much livable, but didn't want to touch his room. But we started to, and we had to because of the mould. One night, I was home alone playing video games in the wee hours of the night when I heard this loud banging. Bang, bang, bang. I instantly froze. I had no car, no one was home, and I was in the middle of the countryside. So no neighbours to mess with me. And worse yet, it was coming from his room. Bang, bang, bang. I held my cat and didn't fall asleep until the sun came up. Luckily, my dad was friends with some Belgian Wiccan priests, and they agreed to come and help. We did a cleansing ritual telling the boy we didn't mean harm and that we hoped he found peace. After the ritual we went into his room and saw a beautiful silver chain gently laid across the bed. And after that night he never bothered us again. Oh I feel really sorry for this family and for this teenage boy. What a tragic way to die first of all and it is so common for families to just not be able to remove their stuff or change things around or even sometimes live in the same house because that house is inevitably full of memories. And look I have such secondhand embarrassment for in the afterlife you're in your teenage bedroom you're a ghost and these strangers are coming in looking at your porn. Oh the, I'd be banging around too to be honest because I would be absolutely distraught with embarrassment. Today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. One woman. (laughs) I mean, what could possibly go wrong? 
and her quest to find America's number one meal kit. You just don't get it, do you? With the cost of groceries going up and up, now is the perfect time to get started with HelloFresh. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and it's 25% less expensive than takeout. And defeating an enemy that makes her face who she really is. We're not so different, you and I. And you just need to embrace it. HelloFresh knows you're busy. That's why they take care of the meal planning and the prepping, freeing up extra time in your schedule. With pre-proportioned ingredients, foolproof recipes, and convenient doorstep delivery, HelloFresh makes it easy to get dinner on the table. <laughs> okay, I know, I know this is a movie trailer, but like, why, why would that be a part of your evil monologue? It doesn't just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Hi, that's me. I bet you're wondering how I got here. Well, here's the thing. I've been using HelloFresh for ages and wanted to make the ads worthwhile, you know. But yeah, this is my personal endorsement. It's pretty good. I've been using it for 89 boxes. That's a pretty long time. So, uh, yep. Coming soon to a doorstep near you. Uh, guys, I think you need to come and look at this. It says... Go to HelloFresh.com slash Real Life Ghost Stories 60 and use code Real Life Ghost Stories 60 for 60% off plus free shipping. What was that? HelloFresh.com forward slash Real Life Ghost Stories 60 and use code Real Life Ghost Stories 60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Today's episode is sponsored by HERS. This time of year, all of the emphasis is always on organizing your space, it's always on wellness it's on spring cleaning it's on fresh starts but actually the most important way to take care of yourself is to take care of your mental health and you can do so at forhers.com at forhers.com you can get access to real medical providers who can prescribe trusted anxiety and depression medication if it is right for you the process is 100% online including unlimited check-ins, provider messaging and support along the way. Plus, to make things even simpler, you can get your first month of treatment for just $25 if prescribed. To get started, go to forhers.com slash spring. That's forhers.com slash spring. And I know for some people that getting access to proper mental health care can be a serious source of stress in and of itself. It also can be really difficult to talk to healthcare providers face to face about things like your sexual health, about things like hair loss and about things like your mental health. That is why HERS makes it simple. Get started today at forhers.com slash spring. That's forhers, F-O-R-H-E-R-S dot com slash S-P-R-I-N-G. The offer is only available if prescribed. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. The subscription is required. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. So, how does it feel when you play Roll Up to Win with Tim Hortons? Buy a hot or cold beverage using the Tim's app and find out. Roll in the app for a chance to win prizes ranging from free coffee and donuts to a Universal Orlando resort vacation or a sweet car. Oh, don't forget the TV. And this year, every roll is a shot at a $1,000 daily giveaway drawing for two $500 prizes. Roll up to win and get treated by Tim's. No purchase necessary. Account registration required. 50 US and DC. 18 plus entered by 4223. See rules at rolluptowin.com for free entry of full details. Void in Florida and where prohibited. And story number three comes from Lauren. I'd like to start by saying that I'm pretty intuitive and definitely sensitive to weird energy and I can pick up on things about people and places. I see things, hear things, smell things and have incredibly vivid dreams that are sometimes lucid. But those are far and few between now that I'm older. I've never experienced anything harmful but definitely have felt negative vibes. More often than not, I feel protected like I have several guardian angels. I've been this way my whole life since I was very little. I had imaginary friends that I never saw but heard and I think my mom heard one of them use curse words because I got my mouth washed out with soap a couple of times and I didn't even do anything wrong. But that's neither here nor there. 
To give some family history, my mother's side of the family is mostly women, and we all have varying forms of sixth sense. Dreams and just knowing things. I believe it stems from my maternal great-grandmother. She died a few years before my birth, but I always sensed something off about her when looking through pictures. My granny held so many superstitions, and it's even a thing in my family to give the opposite sex names to children to confuse evil spirits. I just assumed there was some high degree of spiritual awareness within the family coming from her mother. Lots of male deaths and multiple marriages to different men have happened. My granny's first husband was not too good to her. They had three children and he died in a car crash after my mother's youngest half-brother was born. My mother's father had a son from a previous marriage who died when my mom was very young and she was traumatised by the experience. He also died in a car crash. My mom's father died before my birth and my grandfather on my dad's side died the very year I was born very close to my mother's birthday in October. Because of this, I always got a feeling that my birth was some kind of omen, especially now that I have a baby girl and my own father's health is deteriorating. My father's side of the family immigrated here from Germany in the early 1700s and some native people were assimilated into our family clan. I've always felt a deep connection to German culture, history and lore. And I know Cherokee Indian is in my bloodline too. All around, I've got third eye shit happening. My dad also has abilities like me, and I've talked to him about it, but he insists that we shouldn't. My first memory of getting scared was around six or seven. I was at my babysitter's house after school, waiting for my mom to pick me up. This lady babysat a lot of kids ranging in ages from 2 to 10. Her daughter was a year ahead of me and we had dance classes together. She wanted us girls to go into the bathroom and play Bloody Mary. I had no idea what this meant. And when she explained it, I thought, geez, that sounds creepy, but okay, let's do it. It was late afternoon, but the bathroom had a small frosted window above the shower, so it was pretty dark in there especially when we closed the door and turned off the light. We said Bloody Mary three times and nothing happened. One girl screamed and ran out. This spooked me, but I didn't see anything, so I wasn't scared. Then we all got quiet and kept looking in the mirror. Nothing happened, so we started walking out of the bathroom. I was last in line, and to play a trick on me, I was pushed back and they held the door so I couldn't get out. I was by myself in the dark, I refused to look in the mirror and I got chills all over. I felt like crying but no tears came. I tugged and tugged at the door but they just laughed and I did too at first. But then I thought I heard whispers right next to me and I freaked out, screaming to be let out. I guess the babysitter heard and came to my rescue. And that was absolutely traumatic. For this next one I'll skip ahead to when I was in middle school, probably around 7th grade or so. I had some friends whose parents were witches. I thought this was out of this world batshit crazy. I grew up Christian, but I've never been a big believer of any kind of organised religion. Still, the concept of witches to me was ridiculous. It was me and a few other girls from school that would always hang out after the bus dropped us back home before our parents returned. One day, one of the older girls suggested we play a Ouija board. At the time, I didn't believe in anything like that, so I just thought it was silly and was excited to play. So we all sat at the small, round dining room table. My friend's house was really small and cluttered, so we had to squeeze together. There were five or six of us. Behind us was the kitchen, and to our left was a window. We asked the normal questions, is there anyone there, can we communicate with whoever is here, blah blah blah, and nothing happened. We waited and waited and giggled and waited, and nothing happened. The planchette moved a little, but we blamed each other, and it didn't spell out anything. So right before we decided to put it away, the three of us were still touching the planchette, and it flew right off the table and hit the wall really close to the window. I mean, we were barely touching it, and weren't really paying that close attention because we were chatting. There is no way it got thrown by any of us. We all just froze. I had the chills so bad. We all just stared at each other without saying anything and then behind us on the kitchen counter a small juice glass just burst in its place. It didn't fall, 
It just shattered right there on the counter. And I promptly ran home and never played the Ouija board again. Until this day, I refused to play. My parents split up when I was in kindergarten and both remarried a few years later. Despite my parents' issues, I was always happy and remember having fun with my dad when he was around, which wasn't often. One thing he always did was wake me up in the morning in a silly way. Usually, he'd give me a wet willy. And I know that sounds perverted, but a wet finger in the ear will wake up any kid laughing and being grossed out. Also, sometimes he would just hold on to a toe and shake my foot. When I got older, I would just get pissed because who wants to get woken up? Also, every night he would kneel at the side of my bed for prayers and then make sure my closet door was shut because apparently closets spooked me for a while, but I don't have any memory of this issue. A few Christmases ago, I was upset because my relationship with my ex was falling apart. He refused to go on the trip with me, but it was nice to relax in the farmhouse. The house is in the middle of absolutely nowhere. It's the smallest town with two stop signs and lots of abandoned shops. The farm and the house originally belonged to my stepmom's father who passed it down to her after his death. And when my parents retired, they moved there. There's never been anything creepy about this house ever, but the two back bedrooms always stayed super cold. I slept in the very back room this particular Christmas Eve. We had a normal evening just chatting and hanging out by the fireplace And when I went to bed, I stayed up, playing on my phone for a while. When I passed out, I was out cold. No dreams, just sleep. It was so nice, but I woke up at around 2.30am and my vision was fuzzy. I thought I saw a black figure at the end of the bed. I sat up and looked and it was clearly a male figure standing there right at the edge of the bed. For a split second, I was scared after realising what it was but almost immediately there was a sense of peace that literally washed over me. I felt comforted, and like I was in a trance when I laid back down. The figure lingered until I had fallen back asleep. After a few days of thinking about this, I assumed it was my dad's dad, because of how familiar it felt, but it could just as easily have been my stepmom's dad. Fast forward again some months later. Like clockwork, as soon as my dad is settled into retirement, he started having health issues. He called one day to tell me he had an aortic aneurysm, which if burst would kill him instantly. Luckily he was able to take it easy and have surgery to remedy the situation, and he is totally fine now. I insisted on being with him in the hospital during and after the surgery, so I made the trip up to the farmhouse, as the very next day was surgery day. That night I slept in the middle bedroom, and again I played on my phone for a while to decompress. I slept soundly for several hours, but again I got woken up in the middle of the night. No black figure this time though. I was woken up gently by my left foot shaking. I was in a twilight and totally dead weight. I was not in control of my foot. When I woke up more, I was pretty shocked to see my left leg lifted in mid-air and my left foot shaking. I was initially stunned and scared because I was not doing it myself. My leg and foot were 100% dead weight and being shaken. No one was in the room. Then I guess out of reflex, I got pissed and yelled, stop. My leg fell to the bed and I began to breathe heavily. I was freaked out, but then I also felt bad that I'd potentially yelled at my granddad. So the next day my dad's surgery went well. He was having tremors from coming off the anesthesia. Me and my stepmom slept in the room with him, but I couldn't sleep. It was after midnight and I got up to grab a pillow and a blanket and to search for a couch in the hallway. On my way out the door I noticed my dad's left foot shaking and I just smiled and went to sleep elsewhere. The next day I mentioned this to my dad about his foot shaking and that it didn't seem like a tremor. He told me that his dad used to wake him up like that when he was a kid and every once in a while it would happen at home. I hadn't told him about either experience that I had had in the farmhouse at this point and it makes me happy that I know it was my dad's dad showing me his presence. But I was also sad, because he has not come to see me since I yelled at him to stop shaking my foot. This past Father's Day, my husband and I took our one-year-old to the farmhouse on a day trip for my husband and my dad. This was the first time he had gotten to see my dad's house, and the first road trip for our daughter. 
We took our whole house with us so she could be cosy with all of her creature comforts and also to keep her away from all the knickknacks. I had planned on using the middle room for diaper changes and nap time because it doesn't get as cold in there. But when I walked into the room, the bed was folded in half against the wall with the frame holding it in that position and there was stuff scattered and stacked all around it. I asked what was up with that and my dad simply said that my stepmom decided there shouldn't be a bed in there. I asked why and just got crickets. So obviously she must have had an experience in there she doesn't want to talk about. We set up all of our daughter's stuff in the back room and I noticed a bunch of my stepmom's things in there that she usually keeps in the middle room. So again, she's not even really using that room anymore. During my daughter's nap, she slept soundly without any fussing or waking up early and I hoped that maybe her granddad got to see her. I love female dominated families that have these stories about the women in the family having a sixth sense, the women in the family having these supernatural abilities. And like, you know, thinking about women throughout history, like women have been historically maligned. So I wonder, was it necessary to have, you know, a deeper sense of things and understanding and a knowing in order to literally survive the world? Like if you knew that if you got a sixth sense that a person was bad, then maybe you wouldn't have to be around them. And maybe you could like remove yourself from their company. It's just really, if I love these, you know, lineages of women who have these supernatural abilities. First of all, Bloody Mary, absolutely not. It has been, and we've talked about this before, but there is that scientific fact that if you stare at your face in the mirror for too long, it starts to distort. And that's part of the reason why the Bloody Mary legend has prevailed. Um, but those friends sound awful. Isn't there a horror movie where the, the like mean people lock somebody in the closet? Is it Sixth Sense? There's some something there's some film where kids lock another kid in the closet and it like doesn't end well and I think he gets like scratches on him. Um PSA, don't play the Ouija board. It'll just if nothing else, your shit gets broken and nobody needs that, you know? And finally, like I really like the story of you know, the the dad waggling, your granddad waggling your toe in the middle of the night. But I just wish that ghosts could come up with a better way to communicate that isn't so freaky. Like if I woke up and my leg was in the air, I would immediately think paranormal activity. I wouldn't think, oh, this is a dead loved one, come back to kind of say hello and, and give me comfort. I'd be thinking paranormal activity. Maybe we need some like etiquette lessons for the afterlife. And story number four comes from Abby. I would like to preface this by saying that I'm a full-blown sceptic. Cliché, I know. And my fiancé, while more of a believer than I, is also more on the sceptical side of all things paranormal. Everything that I'm about to tell you went down about three years into our relationship when we moved into our second flat together. We had also just gotten engaged. And while my partner is not spiritual in the ghostly sense, he has lost a lot of family members close to him in a short time and sometimes he likes to reminisce over old photos of them and fill them in on life, if you will. Nine times out of ten he does this with his grandfather that he lost on his father's side. They were extremely close, but due to a family rift, they never really got to spend a lot of time together, only coming to know each other again shortly before he passed away of a heart attack. This is the granddad that always would say that he knew my now husband would meet someone he would approve of even though I never met my husband's grandfather. That is something he told me regularly and was an emotional point for us after getting engaged as he was a greatly missed family member who my husband would have given anything to celebrate this life event with. When we moved into the flat in question, a lovely old terraced flat on the second floor, we had peace and quiet for about six months before weird things started happening. It started off with small things, things that can be written off with logical explanations Things disappearing for a few weeks and turning up in a place we swore that we had both looked already. Wardrobe doors being open when the last time we were in the room, we were sure they were closed. That type of stuff. All the classic horror movie signs that tell you the worst is yet to come. And of course, we were the idiots that wrote it off as anything but the paranormal. To this day, I still somehow have a small streak of scepticism in me. But my husband is absolutely convinced that the entity rooming with us in that flat was his grandfather, joining us every so often to support and let us know he was there watching. If we're going to go down the route of assuming these spooky goings-on were definitely paranormal, 
then this is as sure as hell the option that I wanted to be. That was until I started hearing it, and eventually seeing it. At first, the ghost in the house started off as a bit of a joke, a good way to pass off weird things that were going on without blaming each other or putting too much emphasis on it. Truthfully, I thought my husband was just messing with me when a lot of this stuff happened. I played along, and the joke continued between us for a few more months before things started to escalate. When things got more obviously ghosty, it always seemed to be happening around me. Either when Ben wasn't home or wasn't in the room to witness anything. The first thing that truly freaked me out was the footsteps. We were in a second floor flat, so when coming through the front door you immediately go up a flight of stairs to get to our level. Only our flat can be reached through this door and no one but Ben and I had access. One night after coming home from work late, I opened the door, shouted my usual hellos and started up the stairs. The moment my foot hit the first step, I heard the undeniable pitter-patter of feet running from the living room out into the hallway and then into the main bedroom right next door. Looking back, it was clear that the footsteps weren't Ben's. They were too light, too fast and too... unnatural. Considering Ben is a six foot six rugby player with the agility of a T-Rex generally means that nimble, light and quick footsteps are not his jam. I could hear him walking around the flat like a herd of elephants, even when I'm outside in the backyard. I carried on up the stairs thinking that perhaps Ben was just running into the bedroom so that he could jump out of the door and scare me when I got to the top of the stairs. He did this sometimes and it's cute as hell so I play along. When I reached the top, I expected his big frame to jump out of the door and scare me, but there was nothing. I walked further into the hallway to hang up my coat, and that was when I noticed the flat was completely silent and very obviously empty, apart from my now nervous breathing. I hovered in the hallway for longer than I knew Ben would be able to hide without laughing, and then cautiously pushed the bedroom door open. Nothing. Completely empty and exactly the way we left it that morning. 30 minutes later, Ben came through the front door, having had a late evening at work and no phone battery left to let me know he wouldn't be back at the usual time. It's safe to say that we slept in the spare bedroom that night. This happened again a few more times, just often enough for me to start getting used to expecting it at least once a week, and always the nights that Ben was working late. It was almost like whatever it was knew exactly when I was going to be home alone and perhaps felt more comfortable showing themselves when it was just me. At least that's what I wanted it to be. The next incident is the big one that really sent chills down my spine and was the beginning of the end of us living in that flat. Whenever I was home alone and showering, I would always leave all the internal doors open so I could see right through to the entire flat. By this point, it was really the only way that I felt comfortable being in there alone. One afternoon, I was home from work early and decided to take a shower, as it was hair wash day. That's thick hair problems, it takes some serious planning. Now, despite all this weird shit going on, I love myself a true crime, paranormal or generally spooky podcast. And the shower is always my go-to listening spot. It was a ritual. Ben knows this and would always loudly announce himself when he came through the front door from work, always sticking his hand through the hallway door, the one that connects the hallway to the living room and the kitchen, to wave as he went into the hallway to hang up his coat and bag, etc. This day was no different, and about halfway through my shower true crime session, my eye caught some movement in the door leading from the living room to the hallway. A male hand, just like Ben's, gave me a big wave, while simultaneously announcing, I'm back, it's just me! Just Ben, I thought, since I'd heard him say this hundreds of times before in the exact same tone and intonation as I'd just heard it. Only this time there was no Ben. After the hand disappeared and the voice trailed away, there was nothing. No movement, none of the usual sounds of Ben shuffling his shoes off and hanging up his coat before appearing again in the doorway. No casual chat through the open doorway as he came into the kitchen to get a glass of water and a snack. Just nothing. Freaked out, I paused my podcast and ended the shower. When I got out of the bathroom into the living room, I couldn't help but notice that the whole place was absolutely freezing. An unusual feeling considering it was the middle of summer. 
and we had downstairs neighbours that never seemed to turn their heating off. I checked the whole flat and Ben was nowhere to be found. His work shoes and coat were not hung up and he was not in either of the bedrooms getting changed. An hour later he came to the door as normal and went through the routine that he did every single day. The routine I had already seen him do once that evening. I never told him about the last thing, as I just had an overwhelming feeling that it was not his grandfather, and talking about it would give it energy and invite our new friend to come back for more. This continued to happen a couple of times a week along with the footsteps, up until we moved out about four months later. Sorry, how weird is that, that we have two such specific and such similar stories in the same episode? I know I've said this a bazillion times, but this happens all the time in this really like serendipitous way. How strange, and that sounds truly awful. That story made the hairs on the back of my arms stand on end, for real. Everything from the footsteps running through the house to the hand waving while you're in the shower. Oh my God, it just sounds awful. And it's funny that you should say about it, not about not wanting to give it energy, so you just ignored it. Because that's what Dylan did in the first story too. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what these creatures are that are imitating loved ones and running around your house. But either way, it sounds horrendous. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Thank you to Dylan, David, Lauren and Abby for sending in your stories. Remember, the last story came from the 6th of July, 2021. And if you would like to know anything about Real Life Ghost Stories podcast, you can do so by checking out reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And on that note, I shall see you next time. So, how does it feel when you play Roll Up to Win with Tim Hortons? Buy a hot or cold beverage using the Tim's app and find out. Roll in the app for a chance to win prizes ranging from free coffee and donuts to a Universal Orlando resort vacation or a sweet car. Oh, don't forget the TV. And this year, every roll is a shot at a $1,000 daily giveaway drawing for two $500 prizes. Roll up to win and get treated by Tim's. No purchase necessary. Account registration required. 50 US and DC. 18 plus entered by 4223. See rules at rolluptowin.com for free entry of full details. Void in Florida and where prohibited.